What's up guys, in this video we're going to show you a big thing of what you should not do when you get a frog and the big thing you need to do when you get a frog. And I also go over and you will see how I break down fishing a new place or new pond for that matter. Walk you through everything as I go, but here we go. Alrighty guys, we are going to get out of frog. And tie it on first. I'm gonna start with this little guy. The Jackal Kara frog. See if we can't bang some off the frog. There's a ton of scum. Right now I am tying a Palomar knot. First thing I love to do when I pull up to a pond that is crazy scummed up like you can see this one is so I love throwing frog oh just had a little bluegill try to eat it Oh my word, all that is getting all down in my reel. Look at all that, that is nasty. It's caking everything up. We trust the chatterbait over here and it's cleaning water once. This is a Z-Man Jackhammer chatterbait, black and blue. And I picked up the black and blue because black and blue is usually a staple in stained water like this. And it's because it creates a bigger silhouette that stands out better. Oh, there's a little guy. There we go, fat little guy, off the chatterbait. Set him back. Now I decided to move around the bank a little bit. It's always good to move around and keep trying different areas of the pond or place that you are fishing. Helps get your lure in front of new fish. I pick up the frog again just because it didn't really seem like they were really too keen on chasing the chatterbait down. So decided to go for the frog. That kind of makes them react a little bit as well as it's a lot slower retrieve style. As you can tell, I'm missing quite a few on the frog, and I pause and look at it a little bit here, and I'm starting to wonder if it's because I haven't bent the hooks up yet, or if it's just these fish are not big enough.
There's one on the frog. Just barely got him. There you go, Joe. So you guys can see here, I'm just doing little little bitty subtle twitches to get this frog to kind of walk the dog back and forth. That really helps get the bite. This frog's kind of nice, you hardly have to move it a little bit just to get it to walk the dog. A little bit closer to this. When pond fishing too, it's always really good to, especially when you're throwing something like a frog, throw him right up against the banks because these frogs will jump in right off the bank, and it's real natural. Like when you do it like that, a lot of times the bass are just sitting there waiting for him, jumping in around the edges. I just keep slowly working my way around the pond, throwing the frog, throwing up against the bank, and out towards the middle as well. Yeah, the scum definitely gets annoying to pick off for your stuff and your reel and everything after a while. But sometimes if you want to catch fish, you just got to push through it and deal with it and keep pulling it off. Don't let something like that discourage you from catching fish. See, guys miss one right there, right at the bank. What did I tell you about right in at the edge of the bank? They're waiting right at the edge of the bank for it. Come on. Do I keep missing these fish because they're that little? Or because the hooks ain't bent up? We're going to find out before I keep losing them. So what I'm doing here is what you want to do when you get frogs. I just didn't. You want to bend the hooks up just a little bit. That was a little too much. Just a little bit like that. So that. They get the fish just a little bit better. That's perfect. As soon as it runs down over top, then you'll snag them right away like it's snagging my finger.
one is a good one. Whew, look at that beast, guys. Damn it. Can't get a hold of him. Look at that giant. There we go. That is what we came for. Big old pond beasts like that. Look at how much she wanted that frog. She ate that bad boy. That's a tank. It's probably a four and a half. There we go. Hook pop right out. It's a little fatty. There we go guys. Check out that big old fatty. That's a nice fat one. Check her out. Real good one there. Let this good one go. There she goes. Now I'm making my way back over to where I caught that big fish. See if we can find any more big ones over here. Got another on the frog. Another little guy on the frog. Look at this scum I'm just doing in my reel. Ugh. I'm gonna have to clean this bad boy out when I get home. Oh boy. As I'm sure you can tell now, I ain't missing anywhere near as many fish. Now, with the frog, you can always miss fish. Especially because a lot of times they will completely miss the frog and it, just out of reaction you will set the hook at least until you get really used to it and waiting but with the frog there's a lot of missed fish but like I said bending the hooks up definitely helps get a better hookup ratio and that's always what you want. Damn it that was a decent fish. He didn't even get it though.
Now I decide to switch it up and go really slow and tie on a wacky rig Senko. Well, yum dinger in this case, a green pumpkin chartreuse yum dinger. Let me try Senko once. And wacky rig just can kill in ponds, especially when certain fish aren't active. They just can't resist the slow fall of a wacky rig a lot of times. Didn't even really know he was there. Come on. Stop it. Stop laughing. Of course, you can swallow it like a d**k. Well, I got my pliers. You know he's hooked deep. I can get that right out. Let him go, he got picked by a bird. Oh, that's a really little guy. Cut him on the outside of the mouth. There's a little guy. Curious if they'll eat the kicker frog even better. Or if I'll just miss fish like crazy. Probably just miss fish like crazy. But, we are gonna try and find out, I think. There's my pliers. And we're going to take the hooks again, bend them up just a little. Bend them up just a little. There we go. Got them nice and sticky. Now we're going to try the scum frog, one of my personal favorites.
Dang, just never got him. This other white frog was the key. I believe this is a mullox or jackal. I will have to double check and get back to you on what it is exactly. I'll link it in the description then. But this little bad boy was the big key. Caught most of the fish and the biggest one on that. And then caught one or two on the scum frog and one or two on the Senko and one on the chatterbait. But frog was the big key. Scummy ponds like this. No shocker, it's really all you can get away with using. As you saw how much uh, scum was piling up in my reel, it was kind of getting to be a pain in the butt. But, still got on some, even though we didn't even have the right setups, didn't have my frog setups, and then I casted all the line off of my one and almost lost my frog because of it, I had to snag it with the other rod. Then I had to put it on my uh, other setup, and neither of them have braid, always throw frogs on braid. And uh, both of these had fluorocarbon, so it was sinking and getting even further down in this gum than I wanted it to. But, nice thing about ponds is you can still catch fish even though you don't have the right setups and the right stuff. But, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Gotta thank Jeremiah for letting me come over here. And if you like this video, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Stay tuned for the next one. Get entered in my giveaway. We'll be giving away five of my favorite lures as soon as we hit... Uh, 1500 subscribers we're not too far so get subscribing to get entered and you can also leave a comment for an extra entry and you share it on social media and tag me in it for another extra entry but we will see you next thursday guys tight lines